I guess we're gonna maybe explore some feelings. Maybe not, because men don't have feelings. Whatever. So, what is the worst possible thing that can happen to a car guy? You know, absolute worst. Well, losing a car, of course. But there's differences to that. There's, there's a nuance to it. And it's not just losing a car. It's worse than that. You know, I've lost cars through car accidents. You know, a deer or someone else pulls out from me, whatever, that kind of thing. You know, that's bad. It's, you know, traumatic. And, I, and I'm, let me back up a little bit. And I'm talking about losing a car that is really special. There's something that you really like about it. You know, whether it's actually unique or whether you just like it or have some other, you know, deep love for, for a particular car. So it's something special, something really special to you. So the worst possible thing is um, when you're the instrument of its, of its demise. So this guy, unfortunately, it's, it, it's time has come. And I've known it's been it's been coming for some time, but why this thing is so special is the most reliable vehicle I have ever owned, I think, in my life. Um, <clears throat> I've had it for a little over a decade. Uh, I was de I've been deployed three times. My second deployment was to Kuwait. It sat in front of my shop for a year, for a full year. I did one thing to prep it for that that long rest. I locked the doors and walked away from it. I came home, grabbed the keys, opened it up, pumped the gas, set the choke, and cranked out for about 15 seconds and it fired right up. Coughed and wheezed for a couple seconds and then purred like an angry kitten. You know, and then away I went with it. You know, it's just amazing that something that literally made from leftover parts can do something like that. I just got home from another deployment from Afghanistan. Same thing, it sat in front of my shop this time for about 11 months, give or take. And uh, same thing, this time for some reason it wasn't locked. I thought I locked it, maybe I didn't. So whatever, still, I just jumped in it and started it up and took off and away I went. You know, no low tires, no nothing. This thing will start at any time, anywhere, no matter what the weather is, and it'll just go. I. I would have no problem getting in this thing and driving across country. It's that reliable. And it's it's neat in that I literally put this thing together with scavenge parts. I call it my scavenge rod. When I found the thing, um, had some electrical issues, ended up swapping out the motor, found a motor transmission out of a 78 Plymouth Voyager van, threw that in there. Um, stumbled across an axle, or a rear axle. This was born with, uh, I think, a 271 open gears. I found one, uh, 323 sure grip. Boom, that went in there. The grill came out of, was leftover pieces from my other 84 that I had years ago. You know, this piece came from there and that piece came from there. It's just a whole conglomeration of miscellaneous parts. But I have to kill it. Because <clears throat> the other day, or the other day, a few weeks ago, a month ago, Opened the door and I thought I said I thought I saw daylight in the floor, which I know the floor is getting rusty. And I grabbed the seat belt to move it out of the way to look, and the seat belt just fell right out. There was no resistance at all. The only thing holding the seat belt down was the carpet. So it was time. It is time. So, but at the same time, as, as traumatic as that is to me, I mean, it's like this thing has been around forever. It's not that I put the most miles on it. It's just that it's always been here. It's been a fixture of me and kind of what I do and who I am for a long time. Um, <clears throat> but it came together with a whole bunch of random parts, and that's where it's going. The wheels and tires have already taken them off. They're going on its temporary temporary replacement. Um, the carbon intake, actually, they're temporarily on my van because that carburetor went bad. Uh, but they're going to go on something else. Um, the engine and transmission are going to get pulled out. They're going to go into my 75 Voyager. Um, the rear end, I'm sure, will find a new home somewhere else. You know, this piece and that piece, it's got a front sway bar in it. That's going to end up in probably either its temporary replacement or the long-term replacement that I have for it. You know, it's, it's 
gonna go all over the place like that, you know? So, say hi to Lean Burn. He's kind of a pest right now, but he's a nice cat. So, just, you know, hey, what other stories maybe do you have that you can share quickly in the comments about, like, what was your most traumatic vehicle loss, I guess? You know, was it something you had to hit in the head yourself? Or was it something else, you know? Was it just, oh, I, I had to sell it because I needed the money because I got a baby mama or a divorce or whatever, you know? Stuff like that, all very traumatic, you know? Maybe it's a little bit of uh, digital group therapy, you know, for us car guys, you know, having to lose such a trusted friend as, as this guy. But its spirit will live on, so. What do you think, Cat? Yep. So, that's all I, I had to say. There will be a video um, following, I'm not sure when. I'm going to start talking about the temporary replacement for this guy and then the long-term replacement for it and um, some of the craziness that is involved in the temporary replacement um, that I have to go to just you know put something back on the road because a bunch of knuckleheads got a hold of it. But anyway, that's all I have. So you have yourself a wonderful day, and I will be, be back shortly.